Uh, the president of the Treasury <laughs> Board of Canada, the Honorable Tony Clement. Thank you for coming nice back. To, nice to be back, Todd. It's great to be always when I'm in Toronto. I listen to your show. I want to state that for the record, too. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, always good to see how well the show is doing as well. Oh, I much appreciate You know, we got a little bit of traction now after a year. And like yeah. anything new, you build it, you go, you work hard. Uh, and much like a politician, Tony Clement, we get out there and we shake hands. And, you know, hustle. We, do, we, we hustle. Yeah. And we, and we try and get people people on our team, on our side, right. and make the most of it. Speaking of which, how is everything going at the Conservative Party? Well, you know, I think uh, we're, uh, we're obviously governing, and we're governing with a view to the issues that people care about, which include the economy, of course, and uh, the one that has, uh, I guess, taken uh, first place in the news is national security issues, uh, for, for again, for obvious reasons. So that's been our focus, obviously, and uh, we've got a budget coming out in a, in a few weeks, let's say. Uh, and at the same time, of course, in six months' time, we'll be into the election period. So there's a lot of politicking going on on Parliament Hill, as you can imagine, but at the same time, we've got to keep our eye on the ball. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a wild time right now because of this Bill uh, C-51. Yeah. And the Bill C-51 is raising some concern with Canadian citizens. And others are saying, you know what? This is a great thing. We need protection for this country, first and foremost. Uh, can, can you speak to this a little bit to sure. help the layman maybe understand it a little more? Sure. So Bill C-51 is the anti-terrorism legislation. Uh, we started to draw it up after the attacks on Parliament and the, and the uh, murders of Corporal Cirillo and Warrant Officer Vincent uh, that terrible week in October. And basically what it does is give the security personnel the tools they need to identify uh, terrorist networks, to interdict uh, people who were intent on terrorist attacks here in Canada, and to incarcerate them so they do, do not carry out these attacks. And uh, what I guess what I want to assure your listeners is it, 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 is, it is a balance. I, I, w the opponents to the bill are saying you're taking away our freedoms to enhance national security. We actually believe that in order to have freedom, you have to have some security, uh, and that this bill balances those needs out by having judicial oversight, oversight by judges, as well as independent oversight uh, by uh, the ones who will oversee the spies. Is the big fear kind of just this old mentality of big brother, and now all yeah. of a sudden we can all be watched, we sure. can all be looked at, what is private anymore? Is, well, that, is that the ultimate concern? And really, truly, and let me just interview yeah, yeah. because... One thing that's wild about this new age, it's almost better like a nudist just to expose all. Because if you have nothing to hide, then almost who cares? Yeah. You know, that, and it's almost sort of the mentality I'm starting to think. Like, if you have nothing to hide, then who cares? Just show it all. Well, and uh, the opponents to the bill, uh, whether they know it or not, are taking the bill to such an extreme and saying, you know, this means that any protester against Stephen Harper is going to be incar incarcerated when the bill specifically states if you are engaged in lawful, nonviolent protest, this bill has nothing to do with you. Ah, okay. There's there's no uh, there's no spying on those people. There's no uh, there's no interdiction of those people. It's for the, quite frankly, it's for the jihadist terrorists who have declared war on our country, who said they are opposed to uh, not only our democracy, they're opposed to our way of life, uh, they're opposed to freedom and equality uh, of of men and women and 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 uh, of all religions, uh, and uh, they are intent on destroying. Uh, what we believe is, is our way of life, not only in Canada, but throughout the world. And so uh, if we want to protect ourselves from these people who have shown an ability to not only fight uh, in faraway places, but also attack here at home, then these tools are necessary. Is this a real concern? Terrorist attacks more anyway, right here on, on Canadian soil? Because, and maybe that's the ultimate you know, reason why this is so frightening, this Bill C-51. Forget about losing your privacy. The fact is that if you want to put this into action, if there's a reason why you're amending the laws to put this into place, it's because there's real threats. And that's what right. I take out of it, which is kind of scary. Is that true? It is scary. I wish it were not the case. I wish... Uh we were just talking about the economy or, or the environment or all the other important issues out there. But the fact of the matter is we are a target. They have, they have said we're a target. They are recruiting people. And they, of course, they have online tools now, social media, the Internet, whatever. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they don't, you don't have to train anyone in Yemen anymore. You can, uh, you can recruit them online. 
give them their marching orders online, and then wind them up and off they go. And, and that's where the real threat is, Todd. It's, it's homegrown terrorism, this jihadist ideological extremism uh, that is uh, unfortunately uh, having sway over some people and, and, uh, and uh, injecting them into our society. Has your life changed since that day that you were on Parliament Hill um, in the Senate, right? Weren't you? Or in the, you're yeah, about we, to, we are in our caucus meeting. In yeah. a caucus meeting, sorry. Uh, when, when, when Corporal Cirillo got, uh, got, got senselessly shot. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, obviously there was on lockdown and then you heard the gun fired. Did, has that changed your life personally? Well, I mean, there's obviously a lot more security around the Hill. Uh, but it's, you know... Um, we all we all were affected, and and uh, I'm not a big fan of sharp, loud noises uh, coming from out of the blue anymore, because uh, it kind of sends you right back to that moment when all the shots were fired. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, over the holidays. I was in Israel uh, with my family, and uh, including over New Year's Eve, we were in Tel Aviv over New Year's Eve, and I thought, well, you know, it's Israel. They probably are not big on fireworks. I mean, they got they got enough big bangs to worry about. <laughs> But wait, wait, looking over his shoulder. Yeah. Wait a second. But Is that sure, a firework? sure enough, they wow. had fireworks uh, in New Year's Eve uh, in Tel Aviv, and then I, I after midnight I was asleep, and then I was I had a this incredibly intense flashback dream when I was back. I was literally back in the caucus room with all, with all the shots being fired, and uh, I woke up in a cold sweat, and I said to my wife, w- "Were there were there shots outside?" She said, "No, there there were some fireworks a couple of hours ago." Honey, but no, but no, but that's that kind of triggered something in my head, obviously, and uh, and uh, demonstrated itself in, in a dream I was having. So, yeah, I think we're all living with this, and uh, uh, it's uh, not a pleasant experience. But at the same time, uh, we were we've got some excellent security personnel who were, were on the ball there and and prevented a greater tragedy from happening. Uh, what was the um, what was the RCMP or the number one uh, you know security guy who again who who, who the uh, uh, Kevin Vickers Kevin he Vickers sergeant of, sergeant of arms sergeant at arms yeah thank you and yeah. now isn't he in Ireland or something he's he's our ambassador to Ireland unbelievable yeah, what great. a great day what yeah, a great day yeah. to mention him that's why I thought yeah, of it, it uh, you know what yeah that's a great St Patty's Day segue there Todd <laughs> yeah. but yeah we wish him well as ambassador to Ireland uh, and uh, and I'm sure he's doing a good job over there what an what an incredible story incredible. how he came to the rescue I mean that must have been so frightening for you to be there and, and and hear you know you hear the gunshots and I I would imagine that being a politician and being such a high ranking politician as you are and you know you were you know people forget like you were pretty close to you know winning that conservative party back in the day too when Harper did so I mean your goal was not that close but anyway well, I mean you were up against him though <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and but you've been you know alongside with him for sure, a long sure, time now sure. and, and being such a high ranking politician that the things you must know and the things that you know in order to protect the public uh, obviously having the pub- public's interest uh, I, I, in their best interests, uh, I can't imagine the stress that you must go through. Uh, are there ever times where you just say, why am I doing this? I want to get out of it. Well, uh, I'm very fortunately uh, one. I do love my job. I'm passionate about my country. It's it's a great feeling to serve your country. And uh, you, you do put up with some things. Uh, no one has to no one has to hold a uh, uh, a tag day for me because I, I, I believe in what I'm doing. So yeah, that's the compensation for it. And then the other thing you got to do, I really believe, and not everybody does this, but I do, you have to find ways to relax. And I use the, the guitar and music and uh, my passion for the Canadian music scene, those kinds of things, my radio show, Tony Clement's Rock and Shindig on 88.7. I love it. Uh, uh, I to, love it. Uh, to, to relax and to uh, test another part of my brain, get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I think that's important, too, to be a well-rounded person, to, to love your family, to love your community, to have a couple of hobbies, and then, of course, pursue the public interest. Yeah, we're here with the president of the Treasury Board of Canada, of course, the Honorable Tony Clint. Last year at this time, I believe, weren't you at South by Southwest? I was. I know. I'm having withdrawal <laughs> symptoms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's obviously happening right now. And yep. Mayor Tory's, uh, I guess, on his way there or is there now and uh, is going to be meeting with the governor. And uh, I was at the Juno Awards over the weekend uh, in, in the Hammer and Hammer. Hamilton. So I got to keep, uh, catch up with a lot of the industry folks that I know, as well as some of the artists. And uh, yeah, I'm missing being there. But here we are. We're working on March break. And uh, uh, maybe I'll be- get there next year. 
For sure. Uh, you know, it's too bad, too, because we don't even have a guitar. Last time Tony Clement oh, yeah, was here, yeah. he played uh, The Clash of Should I Stay or Should I Go? Uh, yeah. And we got, we got. Uh, hopefully someone can go and find a guitar. Maybe we can figure out. Uh, yeah, Ralphie, go and look for sure, a guitar for, sure. for, for Tony Clement if you want. Um, back to politics a little bit. The Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, John Baird, he, he just sort of up and went and surprised everyone recently. Uh, did that catch you, catch you off guard? I, I had had, I mean, John and I entered politics the same year, 20 years ago, in 1995, in provincial politics. And uh, he'd, uh, he'd said to me about six or seven years ago, you know, we had 10 years in provincial politics, uh, and he felt that maybe 10 years in federal politics was enough. And don't forget, he's, all, he's only ever been in politics. He was a political staffer. Uh, he, uh, you know, he was a provincial politician, then he was a federal politician. Uh, and so he, f- he felt that at, at the age of 45 that now was a good time to do something else with his life. And, and I respect that. I think that was probably the right decision for him. And, uh, you know, life goes on. We, we've got a, a great uh, foreign affairs minister to take his place. And, and I, I wish only good, good things for John Baird. He did a lot for his country. And I guess why I ask, your plan is not to leave politics no. anytime soon. No, I... I, I I uh, left politics uh, uh, because the voters wanted me to leave sure, provincially. Sure. Just uh, before 06, right? Uh, in 03. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I, I've done other things. I, I was, I've been a small business owner. I've been a lawyer. I've been a law professor. Uh, I've been on some corporate boards and done some uh, cha- you know, philanthropic things as well, charity things. So I've, I've done those things. And I've wet my appetite with that, so I'm I'm quite comfortable doing the politics right now. I, I was just worried because you know you might take our job <laughs> being <laughs> such a good radio host. <laughs> that, that was my big fear, Tony Clement. Uh, one of the things too, people now are, are taking a bit of an issue with the conservatives are uh, treating our vets better and making sure yeah. that there are programs in place that post-war and especially with post-traumatic stress disorders yeah. and all this type of stuff that they are taking care of. I know that Aaron O'Toole recently uh, has taken post and, and sort of uh, spearheaded that campaign and right. being. Better, um, uh, that must be dear to your heart. Yeah, and look, uh, Aaron O'Toole, he's the new Veterans Affairs Minister, for, a former uh, Afghanistan soldier, uh, one of the one of the leaders in uh, in some of the charitable efforts to help our vets as well before he got elected to Parliament. He just made an announcement today uh, where we're extending some coverage uh, for uh, for vet- veterans who need the help. And we've added about $5 billion to the Veterans Affairs budget uh, over the last few years. So uh, the, commi- the financial commitment is there. The key now is to make sure the services are there. And what we've tried to do, and sometimes we've had difficulty explaining this, I'll grant you that, but we've moved away from spending on bureaucrats and offices and moved towards... Uh, more services to the veterans at their at their home, and uh, we think that's the best way to serve them, to honor them, to respect them. And there have been a few bumps along the way. I'm not saying it was all perfect, but that is the direction we're going. Definitely to take better care uh, of our soldiers coming home. Sure, and, and look, and they all have different needs. They all have uh, uh, different experiences. They're in, of course. Uh, every different part of the country. So yeah, we have to be sensitive to that. And one cookie cutter does not fit all. And we, we get that. And, and that's where, where we're changing the system around for them. Tony Clement, as the former Minister of Health, uh, are these concerns sort of more, uh, do, do you stand kind of on a more p- passionate level to forget about politics, forget about people say, but you must truly care about people. I know a lot of the programs that you put in place to take care of people when you were the Minister of Health. Sure. And, and uh, you know, that was part of my background, especially as Provincial Minister of Health, where uh, we, uh, we were building some new hospitals. We had a, a program to make sure we were training more doctors, but we also put in place more nurse practitioners at the time, more nursing stations. And, I, you know, when I see more nursing stations open up, as particularly in rural areas, that was started when I was health minister those many years ago. And it feels good. Like, it's obviously a program that's working and is growing. And, of course, health changes because, uh, you know, our needs are always there, but there are different ways to maybe get to those needs. And if we can spend a little bit more money on nurse practitioners so that people don't have to use emergency uh, all the time, that's, that's good for the system and it makes it more sustainable too. You um, also uh, had initiatives including announcing uh, national strategies on autism yeah. when, when you were a minister of... Well, uh, sort of go here. I didn't mean to be so serious, but I have to ask this whole vaccination debate that is grasping both nations when I say, you yeah. know, us in the States by storm. Uh, what's your stance on this? Well, it's uh, the whole thing is ridiculous. It all started with uh, an unfortunate uh, article in a in a in a quite a respected journal that laid to question whether vaccines were 
part of uh, you know autism and that kind of thing. The whole thing was dis- discredited. The the uh, the medical journal disowned the article, said we should we never should have published it wow. in the first pl- in the first place. But it spawned this uh, anti-vaxxer movement. Uh, you know, internet conspiracies and uh, people who never take uh, the word of authority or the medical profession. Uh, the medical professions in cahoots with the pharmaceutical companies or whatever. And so it's taken on a life of its own. And it's very unfortunate because the the way vaccines work is pretty well you have to have buy-in by everybody because if if certain people don't use the vaccine, then they're going to be susceptible. Uh, and we're talking about kids here. So we're very strongly pro-vaccine as, as a uh, as a government and Prime Minister Harper, when Bill Gates was in Ottawa a few weeks ago, uh, the issue was raised and both Bill Gates and Stephen Harper said, vaccinate your kids. And so that should be the, the that's the overriding public health message for everybody. Good to hear. Uh, as the president of the Treasury Board, uh, how, you know, you must understand the finances of this country. H- how are we doing as a country, uh, you know, as a whole? And, and I guess people's concerns are bank rates being so low. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Bank of Canada rates being a 0.75. That with that, there's a sort of a concern that it's only to stimulate the economy. Well, look, uh, we're doing well uh, compared to our neighbors and, and our trading partners, but we're still in a period of economic uncertainty. When you, you see the headlines coming out of Europe or Asia, uh, even the U.S. has had a bumpy ride. Or well, uh, even Alberta a bit now, too, and right? And Alberta with the oil prices. So all of these things buffet us. They're not, they're not originating here, but they have an impact here. So we're, we're doing steady as she goes. We, we're going to have a balanced budget in the next budget that comes out in a few weeks. Uh, and at the same time, we'll still be investing in things like innovation, uh, in training programs, in uh, you know roads and bridges and other infrastructure, broadband, and at the same time, uh, making sure that our, our, we're being fiscally prudent. That's one of the advantages of being in Canada because you know the federal government is, is spending prudently. And it's a it's a net advantage to us because people want to invest here when they see that our government's not out of control. So we're going to continue down that path. Do you worry about a housing bubble in Canada? They speak of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we always take note of the figures. Uh, you know, I think it's fair to say that there uh, there isn't really a housing bubble in Canada. There might be a couple of frothy areas. Uh, uh, you know, but when you look at the the general picture, it's not that way. And uh, the other side of it is, of course, that when people are buying, are, people are investing in houses, that's a sign of confidence about their future, that they believe in their future uh, and they believe that they'll have an economic future in, in, uh, in the, the neighborhood that they're in. And so you don't want to talk that down. Uh, it's like when people were saying, well, people are buying too many cars. You know, well, excuse me. I mean, first of all, it's, it's you know, when it, when it was at zero percent over five years financing, how could you not? It's hard not to buy a car. <laughs> yeah. But we don't want to talk down people from buying cars. That shows that they're confident about their future and about the state of the economy. Yeah. You know, and actually, it, it speaks some truth to even a, a personal situation for me where I bought a house that was maybe a little bit outside my comfort zone, mm-hmm. but I know I love the home. But right. in a way, it's my coach barking at me every day to go and work my balls uh, that's off. Right. That's and despite right. whatever economy we have, my job is to make sure that I can afford that mortgage payment at any month. And, you know, I get that there's, it's going to go maybe up, maybe a little bit down now, which is good news. Right. But, uh, you know, and, and I, I manage those risks very well by working my ass off. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, we all still have to work very hard for this economy to thrive. That's right. And that's the Canadian dream. I mean, uh, I'm an immigrant to this country. My parents uh, took me here when I was four years old and they did it, you know, not f- only for themselves or not, not exclusively for themselves, but also for their kids and saying, look, if we want to be in a country where if you work hard, you can get ahead and make life a little bit better for your kids. That's the Canadian dream. And, and we've got to keep uh, making sure that that's the case. Here with Tony Clint. Brody, uh, can you imagine being a politician? We, we think we have a lot on our <laughs> plate sometimes just hitting MP3s and trying to book guests and stuff. Uh, imagine the vast knowledge of this man right here. <laughs> can you ever no show an important thing and just make up an excuse? Or is that, is that something I've been doing for years? But if you have like, if you have like the ambassador to, to Pakistan in your office, can you just go play golf and be like, I have the flu? Is well, that- we have something called the whip. You probably don't have that in your life, but we have the, the government whip whose job it is to know where you are and to find you if you're not at the location you're supposed to be at. And he actually Whoa. has an actual whip encased in his office to remind <laughs> wow. him that he's the whip. 
So uh, the original find your friends app is a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to cross the whip because yeah. he can make your life miserable. They always know where you are. Oh yeah, they that's that's their job is to know where you are and if there's an important vote or an important parliamentary thing that you're supposed to be at they make darn sure you're there. I'm just impressed that someone knows where you are, Tony Clint, and they actually approved you being here. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I'm very, I'm very grateful I, for I that. Just, I just put it down as personal on my e-calendar. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's no expense associated to <laughs> no, it, no, we're no okay. Expense. No exactly. Expense. I know. Don't worry. We don't want to go all Pam, Pamela Wallen and freak people out. Don't worry. Uh, I, I do have to ask a couple more yeah. kind of serious questions. Let's go to the fun stuff. Uh, actually, this might be fun for me because you know you mentioned briefly about the mining industry and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I have to know what because to me this always meant something different but what is the ring of fire yeah well it's <laughs> the guy who found the, the minerals there was a johnny cash fan okay that's where the ring of fire it actually comes from, from timmins to wherever it was this it's well this whole it's region, in right? northwestern ontario west of timmins uh, west of timmins uh, north of thunder bay north of kenora and so it's not when you eat too much like uh, spicy hot sauce with chicken. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. Okay, nothing thank you, that. Tony. I'm yeah. glad you clarified oh, that up. There, oh, wow. Right? Ralphie Gosh. brought a guitar. We'll do that later. We'll Very that exciting later. stuff. So the Ring of Fire <laughs> is a great, uh, it's, it's a great uh, mining project, which could go on for 80 or 100 years. Uh, and uh, there is a nickel there. There are uh, rare earth metals there. Uh, there's, uh, there's the thing, you know, there's the metal that we use to make stainless steel. Cr uh, chromite is there. So all of these things are there. And the issue is it's in the middle of the biggest bog or swamp, you know, in Canada. And so we have to get roads there. We have to get electricity there. Uh, there are First Nations communities that have to be part of the picture in terms of jobs and economic vitality. Uh, and uh, so all of these things have to happen. And, oh, by the way, you need mining companies that are interested in developing uh, these mines from scratch. And so my comments yesterday, I was in Timmins yesterday. Yes. My comments yesterday were because they said, you know, where's the ring of fire? And I said, well, the ring of fire will happen, but it's not government willing the w ring of fire to happen. Private sector has got to think that now is the time to develop the ring of fire. And then governments can facilitate that. But if you just automatically say, I'm going to spend $2 billion on the ring of fire, and there's no mining company that wants to mine it at that particular moment because of the, the worldwide prices of the metals, then that's not a good use of taxpayer money is my point. So it'll happen. Government will be part of the solution. There has to be a deal with First Nations in the area, too. That's going to be part of it as Let well. Let me just fix your mic a little bit there, Tony. Just, uh, it's, yeah. yeah, just a twist. I just have sure. trouble. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Thanks. and so all of those things have to happen, and it, there's a lot of moving parts. So uh, I, did, I, I hope my remarks didn't mean that I was talking down the Ring of Fire. I didn't mean to do that. What I was saying, because the question was, why isn't it happening now? Well, here are all the reasons why it's not happening exactly now, but it will happen in the future. Wow, got, you, uh, sorry, you Jay. just proved my favorite movie wrong. If they build it, they will come. Field well, of you know, uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen, I guess. A baseball field is one thing. <laughs> Two $2 billion of uh, roads and electricity. You want to make sure there's something going to be happening there. Well, And I guess in this situation that the mining community is in right now with not a ton of overhead because a lot of these companies have gone under as yeah. of late. And, yeah. you know, I know that, uh, you know, I got some friends in that world on Bay Street and stuff. They're not driving the Porsches and living the high life they once it's were. It's quite tricky right now. It, it's right. more of a hustle that they need this kind of money to help be a part of the overall project. Right, and that's all I'm saying. This is going to need uh, the private sector to say, okay, now's the time, and then the public sector's got to be help, helping to facilitate it. And it's, that, by public sector, I mean on both Ontario uh, and Canada. And what we're doing in, uh, at the Canadian level right now is we're, built, we're, we're building capacity in the area. So we're working with the First Nations groups, and you know they've got a lot of important decisions to make on environmental assessments and training programs. So we're building the capacity of the First Nations groups in the area in anticipation of the project going ahead in the future. So we're not, it's not tools down. But it, it has to be done in the right sequence. So you're not going to lead the charge with like a hard hat like Zoolander, get in there like mining. You know, that's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> with my blue steel pose or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Are you a fashion guy? Do you like fashion? You mentioned, uh, you know, you're, you're wearing the, the, the green today a little bit for St. Patrick's Day. Do, do, do you worry about what you look like being on TV so much? I always wanted to ask a politician. Well, you know, uh, you have staff that worry about it. So when I show up with a tie that uh, they cringe at, they... Uh, Minister, I, there's another tie that I think you really should take a look at. <laughs> yeah, and the, the thing that they uh, they dislike the most is uh, Christmas time because I have this really uh, offensive, ornate Christmas tie collection 
uh, with you know uh, you know snowmen and Christmas uh, tree balls. Uh, all I'm and, picturing is the Rob Ford version of the NFL tie yet in <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and I got like 15 of them. Okay, so uh-oh. they kind of roll their eyes at that moment. So I, I don't take it that seriously, but uh, I I do like as a man of a certain age now if people do compliment me on my fashion choice okay <laughs> i feel pretty good about that but you do you put a bit of effort in the morning to, sure. to know that you know you're you're a, you're a public figure my point you're essentially politicians are like celebrities where their every movement is watched so yeah. at times yeah. you have to kind of put yourself together always on and i always hear on twitter if there's something wrong with my tie selection or some or my shirt <laughs> somebody on twitter is going to say something I, I assure you that is, well uh, is the government <laughs> whip also a fashionista <laughs> yeah i know Oh, no, no, he's, he's about like 73 years old from Vancouver Island. So More I, yellow! <laughs> More yellow! It's in this season! Uh, Tony Clement is here, of course. Uh, we're very, very grateful for his time on the program, Todd Shapiro Show, Canada Laughs, Channel 168. My last serious question that I have to ask you is where Prime Minister Stephen Harper has talked about um, the veil that, that, that Muslim women the, the wear. Niqab, yes. Yes, yeah. thank you. And, and how it's sort of contradictory contrary to Canadian values and, and it's rooted in a culture that is anti-women. These are, these right. are, uh, this is one quote that is sort of t- actually taken a bit of Twitter kind of by storm, yeah, yeah. these yeah. sort of things. Uh, do you want to explain it for people? Cause I think I know where you're coming from right. personally. So look, we all have personal opinions, uh, and then we have certain rights in our society. So just because, uh, I mean, just because I may find the niqab offensive, I, I have the right to hold that view. But uh, there are certainly circumstances where I cannot force someone not to wear the niqab just because I have that view. The one place that we feel very strongly that, uh, that one should be able to see one's face is in the citizenship swearing-in ceremony, where you are swearing an oath to the country, uh, where you are swearing an oath to the values of the country, and where that should be done in an open and transparent way. So our position, Prime Minister Harper's position, is at the swearing-in ceremony, we should be able to see a person's face, and that that's where, uh, you know, a, a, a preference for niqab, for whatever reason, be it religious or cultural, uh, where that stops and where the Canadian values should be expressed and where openness should reign supreme. And what kind of flack are you guys hearing regarding this? Well, I think from the public, I got to tell you, I feel it's 80-20 in favor of our position. Okay. Uh, so uh, that, that certainly is the case. Uh, Justin Trudeau, the Liberal Party leader, has taken issue with our position and said that it's, uh, you know, that we're being racist or something. I don't believe Canadians believe that. I think when you ask uh, the average Canadian and the average town or city in Canada, do you think that uh, someone should swear an oath to the country without a niqab? Uh, generally, that is that is the position that Canadians take. And I guess, you know, I'm trying to grasp this and, and what's my personal opinion. I don't even know if I have one, but I kind of understand the fact that it's at a certain ceremony. You're not asking people to change their lives. Right. You're not telling people not to believe in what they believe in. You're not telling them to completely change what they've been brought up in their values. You're right. saying for this ceremony, when you're coming to our country and we're accepting you with open arms to hopefully make a better life for yourself, uh, to go and have the freedoms that every Canadian has. Uh, maybe it's just that one, is it, is it that sort of one respect issue there too? It's is it is one, a mutual respect kind right, of thing? Right. It's the one ceremony where we are all equal, mm. uh, where we are all pledging allegiance to our, our new adoptive country. Uh, and we believe that that is a special circumstance. I hope Mike Tyson never tries to become a, a Canadian citizen because it will be tough to get him to remove that tattoo off his face. <laughs> <laughs> that might, that and I might wouldn't want to ask him to <laughs> do that. <laughs> Definitely not. I saw what he did to that CP24 reporter. Uh, Tony Clement is here. Uh, we're very, again, we're, we're, we're just so happy that you are, man. It's nice. We've known each other for quite some yeah. time. Yeah, uh, the road, music scene, the Junos, did you yeah. have a lot of, who were you hanging out with? Oh, well, it was, it was fun, uh, you know, and uh, some of these new artists, it, that's one of the reasons why I like to go is to uh, to see what these new art artists are, are like and, and what they're all about. So definitely uh, uh, I, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed I, I did hang with Max from the Arkells a little bit, uh, uh, you know, in his uh, in his town of Hamilton. So he was quite excited to have the Junos there, which is great. Uh, and uh, Steve Page and I uh, know each other. So and uh, 
Uh, he listens to my show, Tony Clements Rock and Shindig, awesome. eighty-eight point seven. Uh, and get it out there, man. Well, I, Hunters I, Bay Radio and I, I think Huntsville. I, I, well, yeah. and I'll be. I'll hear you all summer long. Yeah, that's absolutely. Where, that's where you're, the uh, you're, family yeah, cottage is. Uh, I'm on again on Saturday from noon to two, and we're doing. Uh, I'm doing uh, just a DJing and uh, doing uh, 24 songs. Uh, the theme this uh, this week is uh, female artists, so it's all 24. You know, from from Aretha to. Uh, uh, what's the new one? L. King is that her name? The new one? X's and O's. She's got a new song out there. Is it L. King? I L. apologize. Me. No. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. We had Melanie Durant on the program oh, yesterday. You know, yeah, and yeah. she said that Aretha Franklin is one of her uh, idols. Exactly. Uh, she, she lost on the Junos, but was it amazing? So many good young artists. Do you, do you have a couple that really stand out for you right now? Uh, that I'm listening to, uh, certainly the Beaches uh, from right here in Toronto. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a fanboy for them, and uh, they're they're out there doing their tour, so good for them. Uh, all girl band, you know, garage rock kind of stuff. So I'm I'm very. I think you discovered them at South by Southwest. I did. From I did last recall. year. Yeah, that's right. I, I enjoyed uh, listening to them, and uh, yeah, I'm just uh, just sampling, you know, whatever's out there. Uh, you know, everything from uh, I, I, I like the Decemberists. I like their kind of their folk uh, alternative. They're from the states, but they're doing very well too. So all this all this new stuff out there, it's great. What do you think about the Juno? So where sometimes we lose some of our most famous artists to the states. So you know we joked about it on yesterday's program, but Justin Bieber on the Saturday night that they did some pre Juno awards would actually rather be roasted because that's when they recorded the Comedy yeah. Central spe- uh, special. Would rather be ripped a new bum piece. And normally I would say, but Tony Clements here, <laughs> and, and, and by by the top comics in the world, then celebrate and be praised by Canadians uh, or you know Drake doesn't show up Michael Bublé doesn't yeah. show up uh, d- does that kind of is there a part of you that has such Canadian pride that maybe that would upset you no I, I look I think it's great when Canadian acts can be international acts I think that's fantastic and I really think that uh, maybe the Junos doesn't feel the same way but I think that the Junos should be about breaking in new acts mm. and introducing new acts to a broader Canadian audience and I think this year's Junos did that extremely well yeah like bands like Magic won Magic uh, won uh, and that Keisha is that her name yep yep from Calgary or whatever yeah, from Calgary yep. and huge yep. yeah she's huge and you know she's at like 100 and Hundred million views on YouTube or whatever it is, uh, but th- you know to get them out into the more mainstream, I think is fantastic. So I, I don't I don't mind Drake not being there because then it's all about Drake, right? And and we should have some oxygen for new artists to break through. Yeah, everybody know, already knows. Like Drake will get more likes on, on a on an Instagram photo, yeah. which is uh, wild, than probably the amount of people watching the Juno. So he's got enough. Is what he's got enough? Saying. And uh, there's some, uh, you know, Matt a- is it Matt Anderson, a uh, fellow from New Brunswick, uh, great guitarist, uh, a, 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 bo- a voice like an angel, and he did the uh, on the night before the uh, televised. He was doing the in memoriam song when they were going through all the artists that we've lost this year, mm-hmm. and then he was in the he was at the song songwriter circle as well. I'd never heard of him before. Uh, or uh, I think it's uh, Emmanuel Jai. He's a, he was a, um, uh, he was a, a refugee from Darfur. And uh, he's now a Canadian artist uh, talking, uh, you know, singing about and spoken word about his experiences as a, a, a soldier, a child soldier in Darfur. Wow. I mean, heavy stuff, but amazing artistry to have these artists uh, to have that audience, I think is fantastic. I don't know that last guy. I'm going to look him up for sure. That That's very powerful stuff. Uh, I can only imagine the real emotion that would come through music from his experiences. Well, in no the songwriter circle, we had him doing one of his songs about you know being a child soldier. And then we had Fred Penner, uh, uh, you know, the great uh, uh, kids uh, guitarist sure. and, and song, songwriter doing some of his songs. So Blowing up well, balloons and making dogs out of them or something. No, so. But, you know, it shows the diversity of Canadian music, uh, and we should be passionate about that. Or at least I, I like to be anyway. Now, if, if so the, the, the Ring of Fire, right, the mineral-rich <laughs> Ring of Fire, was discovered by a Johnny Cash fan. Now, if a Belieber, a Justin Bieber fan, found that and, and named it the baby would you still call it the baby in press conferences, or would you just go with a different name? I, I think I would go with something more generic. <laughs> <laughs> that would be tough. I mean, you can't beat the man in black, so yeah, that, you you're on safe ground on yeah, that. You can. Biebs great. is a little bit of a different story sometimes. <laughs> Have you ever met Justin Bieber? No, but he, uh, well, I did and I didn't uh, at the Junos in Newfoundland a few years ago. We all had to escape because we were going to get ashed in by the volcano in Iceland. And his, right. his entourage cut in line uh, to, to leave. 
signed a few uh, Bieber photos for the uh, for the check-in ladies, and like left the left of the rest of us just sort of like behind them for about an extra 45 minutes as they checked in 45 pieces of baggage and just got out just got out before everybody yeah, before yeah. they cut the they, they 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 shut off the airspace so i tweeted about this this is one of my more infamous uh, tweet rants uh, where i was uh, taking issue with uh, the priorities of the of the Bieber entourage, let's put it that Did way. Did anyone reply to you from the Bieber camp? Did anyone apologize for Nothing. his behavior? Nothing. 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 No and, respect. And this was, this was before any of this other nonsense happened. Like, this was when he was still a, supposedly a wholesome kid. But And he probably was. Sure. But you saw around him, like, this is what happens, right? You build up these entourages of people who uh, whose, you know, revenue stream is based on shielding you from reality. Yep. And that's where the problems start. It's actually why I, I generally don't like PR people. PR people protect their talent way too much and don't let them be their true selves, right. where in fact they want to be. And they think it's their job to kind of be their wrangler and be their handler and tell them how to act and what to do. But really, the best thing about people, much like even you, Tony Clement, coming in here and being a regular guy is just that. Being a dude, being being just yeah. a cool female, hanging out, talking like conversational. You got to keep way, it real. You got. I love you. Like you do. You got to keep it real. Yeah, yeah. The, the infamous Bieber story. I'm not sure if you heard this one. It was I think it was Super Bowl 2000. And, uh, it was the one in New York, whatever that was, 2012. Uh, the one in New York, Bieber's plane apparently got held up for so long, and you know all the private jets go to the Super Bowl, that they were going and circling around in airspace forever and ever and ever, that a lot of these like really important figures actually missed the start of the game because oh of Bieber's gosh. plane was being checked so, so thoroughly. I thought, you know, I thought it was going to be about his monkey again, but oh, that the, might yeah. be a, another story. <laughs> the monkey's a great pilot, Tony. He's, he's <laughs> exactly. one, of the, one of the best pilots ever. The Twitter, what are you on Twitter again? Uh, at Tony Clement CPC, and just like you, Todd, I'm also more on Instagram these days, and it's the same call letters at Tony Clement CPC. On yeah, Instagram. I saw a great picture of Tony Clement on Instagram with a moose yes. the other day. Yes, my Melfi. Yes, uh, yeah, moose I, selfie. And of course, the moose selfie, yeah, yeah. the Melfi. Uh, you're out in that region, of course, Perry Sound, Huntsville, all yeah, up yeah, north yeah. and stuff. Do you love it? Do you still love uh, being connected with nature? I, I, you know, it's it's a great part of the world, and uh, you know, Toronto is Toronto. It's a great city. It's a great world city, but uh, I I love being in Perry Sound, Muskoka, twelve months of the year, and uh, uh, I, you know, snowshoeing or you know, seeing the wildlife. Or we've got that great. Uh, it, it's really become world renowned at Arrowhead Provincial Park, north of Huntsville. They've got a they've got a skating track now through the woods that wow. goes for like almost two k, wow. uh, and so you can actually you know and it's all zambonied and the whole thing and you can actually strap on some skates and skate through the woods. It's it's unbelievable. We got people coming in from Europe and from Asia just just for that. So you got all this great outdoors and uh, why not love it in the winter as well as the summer? And none of them snowmobilers get in the way, eh? They, no, you, you keep them off, right? <laughs> <laughs> they they keep a lot of our restaurants and inns uh, open over the winter. So uh, yeah, you we'll know. begin with. No, we love the snowmobile yeah, culture, yeah, man. They're yeah, great. Exactly. As long as you never drink in snowmobile, people. Exactly. There's a lot of very serious accidents, and I can say that because I know someone. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. But anyway, be very careful. Never, ever drink in snowmobile. For some reason, people think they can. And also be careful of the lakes. Don't go on them if you think they're not as frozen as they are. <laughs> that's that's the warning right now, although we had very thick ice this year. But now is the time where you have to be a bit more conscious of that. Be a bit more careful. Uh, Tony Clement, he he connects with, 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 with you know you on Twitter and on Instagram. Make sure you follow him. And uh, you really are one of the guys who's just a regular uh, guy, as I was saying. Thanks, and and yeah. thank you for being that way. Yeah. You've been in politics for so long. And often, uh, you know, we forget the tough tasks, the tough job, all the decisions that you have to make. And you're never going to win everybody's uh, approval. You're never going to. But if you show humility in the process, which I think you do, you can at least have a connection with all of Canadians that thanks, way. Man. And you do yeah. it so well. So thank you for your time. Oh, thanks, man. Are we going to do a yeah. thing? Or let's, uh, you know, you're, let's bring South by Southwest right here on the Todd Shapiro show. Uh, we found a guitar. I don't even know if it's tuned. Uh, and, and Tony's going to do something very cool for us. We got video going on this, uh, Sam. We're going to make a music video of this. We're going to make it out. Any, any song you want to play? I'm gonna, I, I've had some fun um, doing, a, uh, doing a punked up version of Lord's Royals. So oh. If you don't mind doing all that. I, I, I would love, Let me introduce it. This is the president of the Treasury Board, the Honorable Tony Clement here. On the Todd Shapiro show, I'm doing like a total, a, a total like throw, like you would do on your on your show, which is where? It's Hunters Bay Radio, eighty-eight point 
one, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80